come back on. Let us know where you're joining from. Joining from my office in Cadot Lake, Alberta, Oblan Cree First Nation and Treaty 8 Territory. Elvis from the Can Do Youth Summit. <laughs> you're like one of the uh, celebrities. All the young people loved you. Glad you're here. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I actually made a lot of new friends on Facebook. <laughs> Awesome. So I'm still helping them out. <laughs> oh, of course you are. I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Like our, our young people need those those good voices and guidance and support and mentorship. Love it. Yeah, training opportunities. Anything comes up, I'll send it to them and say, hey, check this out. <laughs> awesome. Well, glad you're here. Good to see you. And we mm -hmm. got Ken. Ken, come on in. Let us know where you're joining. I know where you're joining from, but the rest of the group doesn't know. Let us know. Oh, Kenville, Ontario in the chat box we're glad you're here ken just you know ken is one of our star participants he shows up every webinar we love it in fact i think he won a thou was it a thousand or five hundred dollar gift card in december because he had so many my, com my computer is stuck on uh, on your channel i just can't get it off your channel <laughs> <laughs> we we got a fan we got a fan Awesome. Well, welcome, everyone. It's uh, Tuesday. It's a gorgeous day here in Amiskwichi, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm Michelle. I'm joining from Treaty 6, Edmonton area. I'm a member, though, of Kwa and I don't know why I said though, but I'm a member of Kwakatoos First Nation in Saskatchewan, Treaty 4, Treaty 4 gal right here. I uh, just want to take a moment before we, we jump into today's content, just take a moment to acknowledge the, the gifts uh, that creator has given to us today. So think in your heart, take a moment, maybe take a couple of deep breaths here, maybe close the eyes, maybe drink a little bit of water, uh, but just take a moment and just acknowledge four things. You know, I like four, I like the fours. So acknowledge four <laughs> things that you're grateful for, you know, from when your head rose, um, lifted your head off the pillow this morning and to this moment what are you know and simple keep it simple or maybe there's just something grandiose going on in your life and in your world but just hold on to that gratitude that's medicine right there and as we go and walk <clears throat> along creator's world um when we carry gratitude we carry our, our own good medicine we carry our own good energy and i think part of our responsibility is to to make creator's world a little bit better, a little bit stronger, uh, you know? And I think that's what these webinars are all about as well. We're listening to a story, we're listening to um, knowledge and perhaps some advice that's gonna be shared with us. And part of that is just building in our own capacity, becoming stronger, knowledge is power. And when we listen mm -hmm. to each other's stories, you know, I feel like knowledge is dropped. Knowledge is given to us. And and what do we take with that knowledge? And, and we can walk stronger and taller in creator's <laughs> world. So our responsibility is so many things, I, I think, but I, I believe it's a beautiful thing to be able to, you know, play a good role in creator's world. So mm -hmm. we walk with that gratitude. We walk with that good medicine. So we welcome you here. I am so looking forward to today's um, webinar. We got an incredible young guest speaker. You know what I love? I love the 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 young energy, the young people. They bring only a unique energy and fire to our world that that you know only they can bring. So we need to hear their gifts. We need to hear their stories. We need to hear how they're understanding, you know, the world, how they're walking out in their gifts. So that's what today is really about. We get to listen to um, our guest speaker, Danita. She's going to show or share, maybe show, I would probably show, show her journey <laughs> as a creative, um, her story. I got to listen to her and meet her for the first time in on virtually um, back in December with our Indigenous coaching program with Kendall Netmaker. By the way, if you know of any young people who might want to partake, we have two cohorts, two more cohorts that are happening later on this year. So make sure you stay tuned to Can Do. Um, but back to 
our guest speaker. Got to meet her in December and her story was powerful. And so she's going to share that. And I know you'll walk away inspired. You'll walk away um, challenged, but challenged in the best way. Are you showing up in the best way in your own gifts that creator has given to you? Um, so great. It's going to be great. So <laughs> a little bit, I mean, there's like, I'm looking at her bio and there's so much, and you're going to be a witness to this as you listen to her share her journey. Um, but she's currently right now in Vancouver, um, since her graduation from Vancouver film school in 2016, she has seamlessly blended her skills in digital design. She's remarkable. If you, I've found her on Instagram and just remarkable work. Uh, she has <laughs> cultivated a thriving photography business, capturing the essence of her subjects with a unique and captivating style. Like she's brilliant. Her journey into social media management began with a fashion brand where she quickly discovered her knack for content creation. The newfound passion led her to work with social media agencies, developing customized content strategies for her clients, showcasing her talent for visual concepts. So she's going to share her, like she's done some remarkable work um, along the way. She's been fe featured in City Line and Jillian Harris for Indigenous Peoples Day in 2021. She's doing remarkable things, making waves in the world. Just such a great example to <laughs> all of us. So thank you so much. You've joined Innovate BC on Tuesdays. We're glad you are all here. And Danita, it's my honor to, to welcome you, to introduce you. So I'm going to pass this virtual mic off to you. <laughs> hi, hi, Michelle. Thank you for having me today, um, yet again, for another awesome um, time together. Um, hearing my story as a creative entrepreneur, I think that's like definitely something that I want to um, do more is to inspire and motivate people um, especially in my line of work there is so much demand in the work that I do and it almost feels like it's just not enough <laughs> um, there needs to be more people like me so if you know any like youth that are looking to get into branding I'm always happy to mentor as well um, <clears throat> hi hi Kando for having me so a bit about myself, my name is Danita Gledo. I am a creative director, brand designer, photographer, marketer. I do all kinds of things. <laughs> I'm also, um, oh, I forgot to use this presentation. There you go. Um, so yeah, Michelle pretty much, you know, <laughs> did all the introductory for me. <laughs> um, but I'm also a founder of Soka Beauty. Soka Beauty is an online platform for Lux, um, Lux Beauty products. Um, I also started this brand as a way to kind of reimagine what Indigenous beauty looks like in the current space of um, beauty. And really, at the time when I started Soka was when um, there wasn't much beauty brands to feel represented by. It was only one brand, and that was Cheekbone Beauty. And uh, Cheekbone Beauty at the time, you know, when I was inspired by her, I was around the same sort of stage. Um, and to see where she is now, it's just amazing to see how um, how far she has gotten. You know, it just proves that for as long as you're doing something and you have focus on it, then there's going to be more that comes out of it. I'm also or was a creative director of the Matriarch Movement. Um, the Matriarch Movement during this time was actually when I was um, starting my brand. So I was, <laughs> I was two timing, <laughs> working on um, my friend's company as well as a marketer and creative director. Um, the Matriarch Movement is an online platform that amplifies Indigenous women voices. Um, so a lot of the work that I did with her is through marketing, as you can see, all the visuals, everything um, that, yeah, <laughs> did all of that. <laughs> Um, we were happy to get quite some funding from Lululemon, and with that grant funding, we were able to um, interview Indigenous voices across Turtle Island, and I'm so grateful to be a part of this project. 
I'm also the founder of The Conscious Brand. So as you can see, I do talk about branding and personal brand activation. Um, so this is quite new, actually. I just started this business uh, last year, um, and I just started getting more into the branding aspect as, you know, as speaking for my, um, speaking as a designer in these type of panels is what my focus is doing through, so, um, sorry, <laughs> through a conscious brand. So my lineage, I am from Treaty 6 territory. Um, I'm originally from Flying Dust, First Nation, and Minnistic One Cree Nation. Um, both of my parents did their own logos for the each brand, so I do come from a lineage of artists. <laughs> um, so with that being said, I took a lot of inspiration from my father. My father was actually a designer um and he opened up his own design shop back in i think it was like 2002 or 2003 and during that time it was really neat because i got to see his process and what he, how he kind of like managed the way that he did design work um so i would spend a lot of time after school with him actually um at his uh, studio and <laughs> watch him and help him with his work so a lot of the stuff that I do now was a direct um, inspiration for my father. Very entrepreneurial as well. So he's well, pretty well known in the community. <laughs> um, but because I lived with my mother, I constantly was growing, like going to different, moving to different places. Um, wasn't very great, <laughs> I must say, uh, but it kind of instilled in me that nomadic lifestyle. So I only I learned to love to move around now. So it's like definitely in something that I truly feel like I'm honoring the Cree spirit. <laughs> um, and then lastly, I landed in Regina, Saskatchewan when I hit um, age 16. At this time, I was going through a lot because I didn't feel like I was secure. I just felt like I was going through a lot of my own personal insecurities. Um, you know, with that being said, my panel here today is truly just to inspire and motivate through my journey. Like I may have some triggers in my presentation as I speak my truth. So bear with me. <laughs> um, but during this time, I was actually feeling the most lost. And it was around this time when I also had my daughter. Um, and I felt like I was filling a void by just simply trying to constantly look for other things to, you know, to entertain myself but really nothing was like nothing was clicking I tried to get into sports and although sports did its trick it was hard to really try to find um happiness and peace when my family were constantly going through financial struggles and also just overall having to deal with being a mother and what being a mother means and like there was just so much um hardships during this time so um and with that being said it was like it was a trigger warning like I had suicidal thoughts um but I because I had my daughter I was like all right you know what this is not something that I should be thinking about you know there's now a child that is looking up to me and I know that this child is going to have a future if you know for as long as I'm here right so with that being said, I figured, okay, you know what? I got to do something. I got to like figure it, out, figure it out in what I want to do with my life. Otherwise, I don't know. I feel like I would have rotted away in Regina if I didn't do anything about it. So with only $200, $300 in my pocket, I moved to Vancouver. I bought a one-way ticket. Um, and during this time, I was like, it's either like go big or go home. <laughs> like that was the energy I was bringing with me coming to Vancouver. Um, and then during that time, again, like, you know, I was still lost, I was still depressed, and I didn't know, like, what I wanted. Um, so I fell into the group of friends that were not entirely great for myself, you know, they were always going out partying. And that's the lifestyle I spent for the next year after moving to Vancouver. And after a while, you know what, I ended up meeting someone, and they helped me turn my life around they inspired me to go back to school. So I went to Vancouver Film School and here I felt like I could see 
colors in the world yet again because I had not not like I didn't know that I was gifted in a way that I am now like I had so much like inspiration in the work that my father did but I didn't know what that was and what that meant for me so once I went to Vancouver Film School I started to get back into that that like flow state with creativity and all that I was able to explore acting writing um 3D like modeling and photography and all these cool things that Vancouver Film School offered and if it wasn't for the advisor to like who believed in me then I felt like I wouldn't have went in but because I was going through this process of entering this school I was like well like <laughs> if someone could believe in me that much then I know for a fact that I could do so much more so that's when I finished my two years um, in Vancouver Film School through the digital design stream. I started my career. Um, and that's when I started getting more into the UI UX space, uh, working with the digital tech scene here in Vancouver. Um, I picked up a lot of like projects um, in startup spaces. So because I was so like, um, I was so like, I had all the skills that I've learned through Vancouver Film School that they were like, they saw me as, I guess, like an attractive employee to be able to design, to be able to like uh, brand and all this and that. But at the same time, I felt like, yeah, sure, I was designing, but I felt like a lot of my creativity was still not being used up. So <laughs> that's when I picked up the camera. And during this time, I really had big dreams because I was like, you know, the three major things is that I wanted to get, you know, um, I wanted to get published on a magazine. You know, that was my one goal. I wanted to work with my, like Canada's number one modeling agency. That was another goal. Um, I wanted to be featured in Vogue through a, a designer that I've always, you know, looked up to. And that was another goal. You know, this is during this time. So, Learning photography, you know, it took some time. It took its, you know, um, challenges and I started practicing more and more with it. I felt that like naturally it happened um, because down the line it was a huge um, a creative asset to have because not only did it help me create beautiful visuals, but I was also, you know, um, going to be using it more in my social media agency days. Um, so that's when I started taking more photos and more of myself. And during this time, I was like kind of like the micro influencer. A lot of people wanted to like, you know, take photos of their products. This is way before social media content creation was even popular. This was when, yeah, this was, I think, back in 2017. So people wanted me to take photos of their product and model with it. And then that's when I started doing more collaboration. I started um, reaching out to more people um, and working with Section 35. You know, even the folks that acted in Riverdale reached out to to have me do their photos. So I was starting to grow, you know. So I saw this, the cherry starting to come, and that's when I felt like, okay, you know what? This is like there's something going on here that I feel like there's a lot of opportunities to come from this. So I started getting more um, interested in color grading, um, how like you know fashion photographers were shooting. I wanted to kind of like emulate that more. So. Um, I just knew that if I could do that, then I could get to places. So, and then people started noticing my work and then that's when I started getting more clientele in photography more so than in my design. So I thought it was like, oh, that's funny. And then, so I picked up a job as a creative director at a fashion brand. And this is, um, Little Mountain, just downtown of Vancouver. And they saw my work and they really liked it. And they reached out to me and said, Hey, we would love for you to come in and let's talk went in, you know, talked to them, connected on the same values on creating fashion that's sustainable and that anybody and anybody could like wear it. So I was able to help tell their story and that was great and all, but I felt like I wasn't doing, oh, anyways, <laughs> that's a little later. <laughs> but during this time, I was 
also working at a social media agency. So I was doing a lot of product photography, lifestyle photography, um, and all the good stuff that you see on socials when it comes to marketing. During this time, it was like, I felt like I was, you know, living on top of the world because not only was I able that I was like living my true purpose, I felt like I was doing exactly what I've always wanted. It was to work with brands. So I knew how to take photos. I knew how to design. I knew how to be creative, but I just felt like there was something still missing. And with that being said, I felt like I needed to go back to school. During this time, I actually, you know, ended up like leaving my job because I felt like I wasn't meeting the expectations that they were hoping for um, in a way that to help sell a product. And yeah, I could sell a product through imagery, but I didn't know how to use the like the technical like uh, tools and the storytelling aspect and all that stuff. I I really needed to like learn more on how to sell a product and how to sell the feeling. So I went back to school and that was through the digital marketing program at Red Academy here in Vancouver. I spent about a funny story. It was, it was supposed to be a year, but the pandemic hit and the Red Academy was actually going through bankruptcy at the time. So they couldn't finish um, my program. So I, we, we got dismissed and because the pandemic happened, it was almost like everything went into stillness, like everything just paused, my career paused, you know, the, the, the job that I had lined up that I was supposed to get paused, like everything completely, you know, shut down. And I felt like I was like, oh, shoot, like, am I not going to get a job? Am I not going to like, you know what I mean? Like, I I couldn't like figure out what I wanted to do next. But thankfully, during the end of the last few months of digital marketing, our final project, they did allow for us to continue our project. So, you know, I was like, you know what, what the hell? So we did the client project with Red Academy. And um, during this time, we were learning how to sell a product, um, how to use SEO, how to use social media marketing, and how to tell a story through socials, um, how to do email marketing. And this client here was actually a client that came to Red Academy and needed help with their marketing. So they um, set us up as students, as groups to work with clients such as her. So my final project for Red Academy was that um, my pilot project, Soka Beauty. Um, during this time, it was really just a concept. It was the idea. And um, the students had an option to, you know, create the concept, the concept concept but I really took it far I was like you know what I want to see something come out of this because the pandemic's here I have all this time so why not <laughs> so I started prototyping I did some packaging design I was you know um, putting it on boxes I was just really trying to conceptualize it into physical form and with that I ordered my first 50 boxes not knowing if they were going to sell, but I knew if I could sell a story, then it shouldn't be, you know, a big issue. It shouldn't be a problem, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> so that's when I started getting um, my first 50 boxes sold out instantly. Um, luckily, I had friends who were helping me market it. It was all word of mouth from there. I didn't have to pay into ads. <laughs> People just started, they were like instantly buying the boxes, sold out. And that's when I purchased my next 200, 200 boxes. And with that, that also sold out. So it started to pick up. And this was during the time where Indigenous marketing, all the resurgence, all like the Indigenous like influencer culture started to pick up. And that's when Soka was really doing like blowing up. So I took it further by updating the packaging. I updated my website. I was constantly updating it to look very like <laughs> good. <laughs> um, and 
with that being said, I was featured in the city line of Toronto. They featured my product with Michaela Shannon. Um, Jillian Harris, who is really well known in the Love It or List It, um, also featured my product through Shayla Stonechild. So this was when my sales started to go. <laughs> um, I reached, I believe, like 22... 22,000 in one year so it was like people were buying it um so yeah being featured in uh city line I think I don't know oh, beauty quite a bit on I think this is a little finicky so it might skip the slide it might not but here's the segment that city line did city line because we are lovers of that label and I love my lipsticks from them and the eyeliners they're incredible so a beautiful way to pay respect to the land that you come from, for sure. Now, the next product, Michaela, is a great way to boost your eye confidence every day, all while, while looking uh, really good for a good cause. Yes, Soka, Soka lashes, again, I'm wearing them today, uh, is a Canadian-based, Indigenous-owned, faux mink luxury lash brand. And Soka is a Cree word that means to have uh, inner strength or a strong spirit. Mm -hmm. And I love their lashes because they are reusable. Um, they have a thicker band, so they're going to form to your eye. The more you wear them, uh, the more they're going to form to the shape of your eyelid, which makes it easier to put on every single time. And their glue right here is the best glue I have ever come across. And then you can reuse these eyelashes over and over again as many times as you like. Uh, just got to take care of them and keep them clean. That's right. Uh, I need to get that. <laughs> I actually have an inner joke about this. My sister was wearing my lash glue and she went into um, a sweat. <laughs> <laughs> with it <laughs> and she came out and she was like oh, what the hell it didn't even freaking budge <laughs> so like every time I use that and like tell people at my vendors and it it constantly like it just instantly sells <laughs> because of that <laughs> so funny it's like I survived for four rounds <laughs> anyway um <laughs> Um, during this time, I was also, again, as I mentioned earlier, that um, matriarch movement was also picking up. So I was full, you know, my my schedule was constantly packed. We were constantly creating stories. We were constantly creating content. So we were doing really well. It still is. <laughs> Um, and with that, my partnership with Shayla Stonechild, actually, we saw more of a lack in digital media for brands in regards to how products, especially when they're talking about sustainability, they're not talking about the conversation that they're having with Indigenous people. So that's when we started pitching to brands like, hey, we need to talk more about sustainability in an Indigenous worldview. But if you want to work with us, then we need to speak from our hearts. And that's exactly what Shayla did. And I essentially helped her in the visual aspect of uh, her content. Oh, that's a little loud. Um, so we, we did campaigns like Rise Kombucha. Rise Kombucha is... Um, a brand from Montreal. Um, and we also did um, a campaign with HelloFresh. Um, and we also did campaigns for Indigo, John Frieda, Sephora, and all from an Indigenous worldview. Again, like we can't be speaking about sustainable products if we're not having Indigenous people at the forefront about it. So that's that's what made our team attractive. And with that being said, I also took on more clients. I was working with, in, with Indigenous businesses and organizations on how to sell their, their story, their vision through visuals. I also picked up a lot of gigs through website building. So with TUSAS, with Leslie Hampton, Section 35, Ink and Iron, and so on. Coffee with my mom, just like we just released that. And I would love if like, um, I would suggest to you guys to listen to it because it talks about the history of 
um, the story of uh, Ganadio's mom and how she was treated with the government um, work, while working at, with the Indian Affairs. Her stories are very, like, it's really inspirational. Um, she talks about the history of, like, the Indian Act and also just, like, overall, um, yeah, with her relationship with the people within that space. So it was really cool to work with her. Um, do you guys remember what I hoped when I started photography? <laughs> I did exactly that. Um, I got published and I worked with my favorite, you know, modeling agency. They're the top modeling agency in Canada. I was also featured in Vogue with a designer. So everything that I had envisioned, I materialized it. So it's really, really been such an honor to be able to go through this journey and to, to learn through other people's stories and to help um, help them through that journey of branding and marketing and all that. And because that I took the leap of faith by buying the one ticket to Vancouver, I was able to show my work in all these brands. I also can't stress enough the power of manifesting, working towards your goals and trusting the process. Because if you don't work towards your goals and if you don't trust the process, then you're gonna feel stagnant. <laughs> um, I also can't stress enough that for me, money is not important, but it shouldn't be the main focus. It is the outcome of your value and what you bring into this world. Your gifts plus actionable goals equals prosperity. Money, opportunities, connections come to you naturally. And also belief, having belief in regarding anything that you do, not giving up, even if there's challenges, just believe that there's something that's going to come for it. Because once you start putting yourself out there, once you start putting your values out there, people are going to connect with it and value, opportunities start coming to you endlessly. So yeah. That's, I, I just want to say thank you again, Kando, for having me. Um, you know, it's definitely so important to have people that are doing the workshops as well, because I feel like if it's not for connecting with others, then I feel like those opportunities are a hit or miss, right? Um, but yeah, <laughs> thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. What a like, what a gorgeous presentation, a gorgeous message and a gorgeous human being just following yeah. the path, following the dream and creator's world. I, I just, I was writing some notes down. Um, I really first want to acknowledge, you know, your vulnerability and your honesty and sharing um, your story because sometimes that's not that's not easy to do or sometimes we just are, aren't willing to talk about it and that's okay but the fact that you bring it um, to the forefront of your story is an incredible testimony of your courage and mm -hmm. the belief that you have in yourself which is the last slide right Let, lastly belief right yeah. um, and then I loved like I underlined this and it's just like um about selling a story because we are a people who are the storytellers and there's mm -hmm. something that happens when we we listen to story when we get to share our story right there's that that connection that we're reminded that we're we're all related like I can identify you know with your story I may not have walked in your moccasins but what you've all <laughs> shared today like there were some pieces in there that I could resonate with and so I really mm -hmm. that I got goosebumps um mm -hmm. so thank you so much and then the word soka I was trying to get my camera so I could take a picture of what <laughs> I'm slow <laughs> technology <Yeah. laughs> so soka means inner beauty to have inner strength and a strong oh spirit. God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> it was like the embodiment of beauty personally for me. That's what I viewed beauty is that having the strength that us indigenous women have is like, it's, it's resilience. And I think that's the beauty of our communities now, especially in entrepreneurial groups is that we all share a common goal and that's strength. So. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right. So those are my comments. Does anyone, you know, do you, <laughs> anyone have any comments or questions? We, we open the floor. <laughs> yeah. Come on in. 
Well, congratulations. So proud of you. I uh, love seeing our future nations doing so well. And yeah, great accomplishment. And kudos to you for not giving up. That's very proud of you coming from Treaty 8. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome work. I just read your comment. It says that you grew up with Jillian. Funny, because uh, I was just messaging her on the weekend because I uh, plan on making a trip to Kelowna. Oh, that's yeah. Where so, yeah, it's kind of funny. <laughs> what a small world. <laughs> yeah, we were, went to high school together in junior high. Oh. <laughs> well, funny. tell her for thank, like, thank you for like shooting up my brand. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's through the Jilly box probably, right? The, well, I didn't go through the Jilly box. It was actually just through a blog post. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was featuring Indigenous brands for Indigenous People's Day. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's cool. great. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. <laughs> What's next for Soka? Honestly, I've I've been in kind of like in the hibernation mode with Soka the last couple years um, just because of the fact that I moved to Montreal. Um, Montreal isn't that great for resources for Indigenous businesses, so I felt kind of like stagnant there. Um, but I think once I'm in Vancouver, get back into my groove, um, the focus I think next is to create networking events and networking content for among Indigenous businesses that are like, yeah, women Indigenous businesses. <laughs> and to come out with like, yeah, I wanted to come out with more products. Um, just because I've had a lot of people been waiting for it. So I think that's like the next thing is to come out with a two spirit box um, and as well as like more styles. Um, the big goal for Soko <laughs> I had initially um, envisioned was to have a shelf in Sephora next to Cheekbone. And that would be cool. <laughs> I'm dreaming with you. I'm dreaming <laughs> with you. I push that forward. <laughs> awesome. Um, oh, yeah. Danielle loves the lash. Oh, you tried the glue too, Danielle. <laughs> Did you go in a sweat with it? <laughs> <laughs> when I run, it doesn't like budge. <laughs> it's pretty love good. That. I love to hear that. So it's fitness friendly. <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> All right. And I just want to highlight, Ken, what he said, investing in your own potential has worked, right? We're our greatest investment. We have to, and again, it goes to, you know, what you said, believing in yourself, mm -hmm. stepping into those places. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think like wherever you put your attention, it grows. So, you know, by nature, I was constantly working on or thinking about the next project, working on the next client. I was always looking for the next thing to do. And there was just always constant new doors opening. And I think like for as long as we're putting that work in and moving forward, then there's always going to be something that multiplies from it. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm still waiting for a uh, Mooseide cologne smell. Oh, <laughs> what? Moose moose cologne? Hide, moose hide tan moose hide smell. cologne? That's a good idea. <laughs> you know, maybe I might take you up on that one. Start a whole math, like a, a moose hide cologne brand. Who knows? Or a moccasin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> moose mask? <laughs> Bear grease, or... <laughs> <laughs> don't give me ideas I might come up with something here. <laughs> indigenous brilliance right here <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> awesome well thank you so much for making time to to again share your story share your your good medicine share mm. your um testament testimony of resiliency so Thank you so much for being here. We're, we were honored to listen to you, Danita. And oh. we, we are excited for what's gonna, where you're going to go next. But I think it's, you know, we are in hibernation mode. That's the season. And so may mm -hmm. in this season for you, you recharge, re-energize, do what you need to do. And then and then springtime comes and then you're, you're bringing 
those things to the world. Mm. So thank you for the gift that you are. We're cheering you on. <laughs> Aww, thank you. Hi, hi. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining. I don't know about you, but I feel pretty good. Thank you for your medicine. And uh, I hope you have a good rest of the day. And we'll, I will be in touch with you very soon. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> likewise, okay. likewise. All right. Take have care. a good day. Bye. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the week. <laughs>